Please stand for the opening hymn, Psalm 27, The Lord is My Light. Lord is my light, the Lord is my light, the Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. If God is my help, whom should I fear? The Lord is my refuge, my stronghold and my strength. Why should I be afraid? The Lord is my light, the Lord is my light, the Lord is my light and my salvation. There is but one thing that I want, to live in the dwelling place of God. To look all my days on the beauty of the Lord, contemplate God's holy temple. The Lord is my light, the Lord is my light, the Lord is my light and my salvation. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I want to welcome everybody to this tense uh, week of ordinary time. And as I always like to say, once we break open the Word of God, once we receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, my brothers and sisters, there's nothing ordinary about that. And this Sunday is Corpus Christi, is the feast of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And what a great time to celebrate it, especially for us who are, who are coming back to church and for y'all who are not coming back to church. We will, really are praying for you. Remain safe. But this is the feast of Corpus Christi this coming weekend. It's a wonderful celebration reminding ourselves of the power of the Eucharist and the importance that we receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, as we gather together to prepare to celebrate this mystery of God's love, let us take this time to acknowledge our failure, the times that we have failed in listening to the word of God, the times that we have failed in following Christ. And let us ask our Lord for peace and pardon. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. O God, from whom all good things come, grant that we who call on you in our need may at your prompting discern what is right, and by your guidance do it. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. At the mountain of God, Horeb, Elijah came to a cave where he took shelter. But the word of the Lord came to him, go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. A strong and heavy wind was rending the mountains and crushing rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, 
there was a tiny whispering sound. When he heard this, Elijah hid his head, hid his face in his cloak, and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. A voice said to Elijah, Why are you here? He replied, I have been most zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, but the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to the sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. The Lord said to him, Go, take the road back to the, des to the desert near Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael as king of Aram. Then you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king of Israel. And Elijah, son of Saphat, of Abel Mahola, as prophet to succeed you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Response. I long to see your face, O Lord. I long to see your face, O Lord. Hear, O Lord, the sound of my call. Have pity on me and answer me. Of you, my heart speaks. You, my glance seeks. I long to see your face, O Lord. Your presence, O Lord, I seek. Hide not your face from me. Do not in anger repel your servant. You are my helper. Cast me not off. I long to see your face, O Lord. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. Be south-hearted and wait for the Lord. I long to see your face, O Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Shine like lights on the world as you hold on to the word of life. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Ye have heard that it was said, Ye shall not commit adultery, but I say to you, Everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body thrown into Gehenna. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body go into Gehenna. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife must give her a bill of divorce. But I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, unless the marriage is unlawful, causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I long to see your face, O Lord. Psalm 27. Today's readings are very powerful. One of my favorite readings from the book of Kings, and that's Elijah at the end of his ministry. He's tired, and he's like saying, what more can I do? Actually, he's in hiding because all the prophets that have been prophesying have been, been put to death, and now they're after him. And he says, I'm, I'm tired. I've done all that I could possibly do. And, and it's a beautiful image of him on the edge of a mountain, and, and he's waiting to hear from the Lord. And of course, a strong wind comes by, but he doesn't hear the voice of the Lord. Then there's this the earthquake, but he doesn't hear the voice of the Lord. Then a fire, you know, earth, wind, and fire. You get it? 
I think that's where they got their, their, their van from. I really do. Scripture-based, right? Earth, wind, and fire. But none of them were the voice of the Lord. And then what happens? In a, in a little voice, a little whisper, he hears the voice of God speaking to him. How do we hear the voice of God speaking to you? In the whisper? In Scripture? But God is speaking to us. He's constantly speaking to us. The question is, are we listening? Do we have ears that hear the voice of God speaking to us? Because when Elijah went listening, he didn't, he didn't hear it in the fire, he didn't hear it in the earthquake, he didn't hear it in the wind, but he heard it in just a small little whisper. So how is God speaking to you? Reminds me when I was in the seminary, I joined the Missionary Servants of the Most Holy Trinity for five years. I was with the Trinitarians. And when I decided to leave the seminary, that was one of the hardest decisions of my life. But what I did was, I, people, Mary, Sister Mary Fagan was a very good friend of mine, and she, along with several other of my friends, were telling me that I need to go on a retreat, but not just any type of retreat, but a 30-day silent retreat. Now, you know, Father Eric likes to talk, so for me to be silent for 30 days, that's a miracle in itself. But they told me to go, she said, go to a place called Leb Shemaiah, and that's, that's Hebrew for a listening heart. And, in, and she said, in many ways, for us discerning God's will, we need to be listening in the silence. In silence for 30 days, you hear God speaking to you. And after the 30 days, I really did feel God was speaking to me and calling me no longer to be a missionary servant, but to be a diocesan priest for the, the Diocese of San Antonio. And that's why I'm here today, because I took that time out to listen, to listen in the silence of God speaking to us. The gospel reading is really something because Jesus is saying that you know thou shalt not commit adultery. But what I tell you, if you have lust in your heart, you've already sinned. And he's telling you, if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off. If it's your right eye that causes you to sin, gouge it out. And is Jesus really telling us to do that? Because if he is, many of us be walking around with one eye and one hand, right? Of course not. It's what we call it a hyperbola, right? He's speaking in hyperbolas in the way of the emphasis. He's putting strong emphasis of transformation. He's saying, if you're going to continue to, to commit that same sin, he goes, and he's referring to, you, you're, you're going to, 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 you're testing the waters, and if you're not transforming your life, then there's no transformation happening and the fires of Gehenna are going to overcome you. Thank God we have a beautiful sacrament of reconciliation and every time we sin, we go to reconciliation. But it's not to say I'm going to continue doing what I'm doing because I know God's going to forgive me. God's saying, no, that's not why I'm forgiving you. I'm forgiving you so that you're transforming your life. You're not stuck in that sin, but there's got to be transformation. They're saying, okay, Lord, I'm weak in this area. Help me get through these difficult times. Whether it's addictions, whether it's alcohol, whether it's drugs, what is our vice? And we all have our vices. We all have that which keeps us from truly being in the presence of the Lord. And he's saying, how do I overcome this weakness? And he's saying, through the grace of God. But we don't have to cut our hands off or, or gouge out our eyes. But what he wants us to do and he's, that's why he speaks in hyperbole. He's telling us that the, the importance of this is very important. He wants all of us to receive the salvation of the Lord. He wants all of us to go to heaven. And he's saying, if this is your weakness, change. Change. But he say, but how do I do it? Through prayer, through the grace of God, through the power of God's graces. And that's how transformation happens. So my brothers and sisters, as we are entering into this weekend of, of, of we going into the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, Corpus Christi, you know, let us remind ourselves the importance of the Eucharist in our lives. But when you stop and think, how do I change my life? How do I be the person that God is calling me to become? And you say, oh, I listen to the word of God. I receive his body and blood. 
that gives me strength that I could become more and more like Christ. Amen? Amen. Please stand for the prayers of the faithful. My brothers and sisters, uniting our minds and hearts as one, let us bring our prayers to the Lord. For all members of the church, may God's fulfillment of the law continue to inspire greater discipleship in the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For our local leaders, may God's justice guide them in their efforts to practice fairness to all. We pray to the Lord. For those who face difficult family divisions, may God's love be with them as they seek healing for their wounds. We pray to the Lord. And for our faith community, may God's call to service continue to bring us closer to one another and to Him. We pray to the Lord. And for our faithful departed, we pray especially for those who have died from the coronavirus, And for all of our beloved departed, may the Lord bring them to everlasting life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And for the special intentions of this Mass, for the medical frontline workers, and for the health of Dora Moreno, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And for our own intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts, and for you at home, if you'd like to go ahead and type in, whom or what would you like to pray for today? We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, you have commissioned us as your disciples to bring your word to those we encounter. We ask that you hear and answer our prayers according to your will. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. At Let them come to the water. Bless you, Lord, out of all creation. And let all who have nothing, have nothing maybe come for us Let them come to the Lord without money. Except for the Lord, oh, oh. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. hands. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all. Look kindly upon our service, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer may be an acceptable oblation to you and lead us to grow in charity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you. With joy we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Gustavo, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. As we stand together with faith and confidence in eternal life, at the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of you. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Then graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, bring eternal life on us. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. During this time of communion, I invite again once those coming forward to, if you have hand sanitizer, to sanitize your hand before you come up. Leave your mask on, and once you receive communion in your hand, not in your mouth, you can remove your mask, consume, and please, please don't walk off with your communion in your hand. We've already had to stop several people. You do not receive communion in the pews. You do not take communion home with you. You consume it right there and then, okay? We've already had to stop several people from taking it to their pews. So please, please, please uh, abide to, the, the, to our, our ushers. We'll be receiving from the sides. And we're going to let this group go first, okay? Then we'll, we'll begin with y'all. So y'all go get in line right now if y'all like to. Thank you. One bread, one body, one Lord of all, one cup of blessing which we bless, and we, oh many, throughout Gentile or Jew, servant or free, woman or man, no more. One bread, one body, one Lord of all. One cup of blessing which we bless, and we, though many, throughout the earth, we are one body in this world. Many the gifts scattered and grown, gathered in the Lord of all. One bread, one body, one Lord of all. One cup of blessing which we bless, and we, though many, throughout the earth, we are one body in this one. Scattered and grown, gathered to one for all. One bread, one body, 
At this time, we'd like to pray and act of spiritual communion for our brothers and sisters who are not able to join us during this communion. We pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacraments. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May your healing work, O Lord, free us, we pray, from doing evil, and lead us to what is right through Christ our Lord. We continue to pray this beautiful prayer to Our Lady Guadalupe during this pandemic. And together, let us pray. Our Lady of Guadalupe, in these times of tribulation, we turn to you, O Mother. See with compassion the suffering of your beloved sons and daughters affected by the coronavirus pandemic throughout the entire world. Ask your son to have mercy on us and bring healing to those infected and protection to all your children. Jesus Christ, Savior of all people, grant us courage to accompany and care for the entire world in the wake of sorrow and uncertainty. We seek refuge in you and according to your promise, deliver us from this danger. Amen. St. Anthony of Padua, pray for us. So again, we want to thank our choir. The Browns did a great job with the choir today, our 930. And uh, thank Michelle. As many of you all know, we've been praying for our seminarian, Michael Coronado, and the seminarians have all been on retreat this week. And we want to keep our seminarians in our prayers. And uh, thank Michelle for, for taking over. She's doing a great job with the that was the uh, live streaming. Thank you, Michelle, for keep doing the work. And thank you all for joining us today. And thank you at home. Continue to pray for us as we'll continue to pray for you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The celebration has ended. Let us now go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Thank you. Take the word of God with you as you go. Take the seeds of God's word and make them grow. Go in peace to clear the world, in peace to serve the world. Take the love of God, the love of God with you as you go. Take the peace of God with you as you go. Take the seeds of God's peace and make them grow. Go in peace to serve the world, in peace to serve the world. The love of God, the love of God with you as you go. Take the joy of God with you as you go. Take the seeds of God's joy and make them grow. Go in peace to serve the world, in peace to serve the world. Take the love of God, the love of God with you as you go. 
Take the love of God with you as you go. Take the seeds of God's love and make them grow. Go in peace to serve the world. In peace to serve the world. Take the love of God, the love of God with you as you go. Take the word of God with you as you go. Take the seeds of God's word and make them grow. Go in peace to serve the world. In peace to serve the world. Take the love of God, the love of God with you as you go. 